Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura, and this morning I want to take you on a little tour of what's blooming in early May. Now we've just had four or five days of rainy weather, and we're going to get more in about an hour. So I'm out here early in the morning, and I'm going to start with this beautiful flower, which is Petite Jenny Lickness. And I planted this last year and I'm gonna put a little video up to show you what it looked like after I planted it. It was basically a nondescript looking perennial. It didn't even get any flowers last year. And that happens quite often. When you first are planting perennials, they are gonna get situated in the ground first. But look at this. Let me step back so you can see. And see, <laughs> S-E-A, is what I've got. I've got a sea of flowers. Look how beautiful. And next to the Petite Jenny are some white flowers back here and they are called Petite Henri. So they're related. These flowers are also called Ragged Robin and I think they are planted more widely in Europe than they are here in this country. Last year I ordered these from rareroots.com and they send you lovely quart-sized plants, which was wonderful. And this year I noticed that the Petite Jenny is offered also by Bluestone Perennials. So I'm hoping it's becoming more of a popular plant for people to grow in their gardens. So you can see the heavy rains smash some of the daffodils that are remaining. And I don't want to step in the bed yet because it's sopping wet, but I do want to come in and sort of gently lift those up. They're kind of smashing into the Petit Henri. But they often say to plant Petit Jenny and Petit Henri together, and I can see why. Look how pretty. Oh my goodness. Now, the Petit Henri is supposed to bloom most of the summer, but it's not sterile. But Petite Jenny is sterile and is supposed to bloom all summer into fall. So we'll see. This is my first year with it blooming. And so we'll see how it does. But you know what? Even if it just bloomed now in the spring, I'd be thrilled. I mean, look at this. Pretty, pretty color. And then next to it, you can see that Totally Tangerine GM is happy as a clam right now. And it is starting to rain, <laughs> so we'll see how far I can get with filming this. But boy, oh boy, what a pretty combination. Absolutely loving it. So back in April, here's what the Father Gilla looked like. And you can see the flowers were glowing. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And here it is today in the beginning of May. So you notice that the orange rocket Barbary is even more orange. <laughs> so gorgeous. And I do plan on pruning this, but I wanted to wait just a little bit enjoy the color but as you can see orange rocket barbary is supposed to be a, a upright type of barbary and it's gotten a little bit splayed out over the years i do love the gorgeous chartreuse color in the inside of it but what i need to do is i need to come in and just tidy it up a little bit and i will do that in probably the next few weeks and then you can see that with the father gilla it's almost done with the bottle brush flowers that's hard to say early in the morning. Bottle brush flowers. But what it's now going to provide is a beautiful blue-green backdrop to all my summer perennials and just the garden in general. So now I'm in the backyard and I wanted to show you some of this before the rain starts getting a little harder. So we'll see how far I get. So I couldn't really do much in the gardens yesterday in between the rain. So what I did do was I stayed here on dry land, so to speak, and I trimmed back this dwarf burning bush. Now the one way in the distance back there behind the 
limelight hydrangea tree. I chose to leave. It looked good because I pruned it last year. This one I never really got to give a good pruning. So this one I did. And then I really went to town on the gold mop cypress this year. I wanted it a little bit shorter so we could see out of our windows into this bed beyond a little bit better. So I'll put the video up of what I did last year when I pruned this and I still tried to keep it as neat as possible. But one of the reasons I trimmed it back so hard on this side is you can see these pavers were just completely covered. There was even a big thing of moss growing there. So hopefully now it can start over. I mean, the good thing about gold mop cypresses is, is you let a little light into it and there'll be new growth coming no matter what. I also took out a bird's nest, <laughs> which was really cute. An old one, luckily, not a new one. But you can see I tried to keep it natural. And then this is what the gold mop looks like from the front. So it definitely looks more moppy from the front but it's a coiffed mop. <laughs> a little more coiffed than I would normally do it, but like I said, I wanted to take down the height a little bit. Still keep it looking natural. And then partly that was in preparation to then tackle this guy, which is our Pinocchi Cypress, a dwarf Pinocchi Cypress. And I cleaned out all the brown needles as much as I could from it, and it just looks a lot nicer now. It had a little bit of dieback from the deep freeze we had in December. These two guys, there's grass here and grass there. That's ornamental grass that grew from planters I used to have here long ago, and it grew through the landscape fabric that's still underneath. So that's gonna be a job getting that out. But I gotta do that. And then stay tuned because I, as much as I wanted to touch this yesterday, this is going to be a whole job in and of itself. This is a sea green juniper and it needs to be pruned. So that's an upcoming video whenever we get some dry weather. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So here's what the dappled willow is looking like. It's just starting to get its pink and white color. So that's gonna be quite a show. You can see a little bit of it already. It's gonna be quite a show in probably another week if we ever get some sunny weather. And then, look how nice the seedling is growing. That is nice. That is really, really gonna look good. And then, look at this. The original shrub isn't completely gone. I got this big long thing, which I'm going to stake up a little bit so it grows upright and maybe I end up getting a standard out of it. Look at that. And what's even neater is down here at the bottom, see that little stem? Hopefully that becomes a new branch because look at all the dead. But this is still showing beautiful signs of life, so I'm leaving it. Now our magnolia tree, Magnolia Jane, still has some blooms, but it's basically turning green right now and it looks beautiful. But there's still one or two blooms that haven't opened yet. So I don't know if I've ever filmed in the rain before. This is a new one for me, but I really wanted to show you all of this and we're supposed to have rain the next few days again. So we've got both annual and perennial dianthus here is so pretty. Back here is a salvia, not quite in bloom yet, but look what's back here and blooming. There's a cat's pajamas cat mint I didn't take out last year. <laughs> it's saying, leave me, don't do anything to me. Now over here is something very interesting because the hellebores, now these are the shooting star hellebores. So I cut the leaves off as you're supposed to cut them back. I did that in March. And what happened was all the leaves grew back. And when I was out here yesterday, I noticed, wait, the flowers are still there and there's some new flowers. So for the second time this season, I cut all the leaves back and I can't even believe I've had to do that twice in one season. I've never had to do that before. This is the Mediterranean pink heath. 
that as you can see is basically done blooming. There's a few little flowers on it, but it's got that nice bright green color. And look at the hellebore flowers. Beautiful. And then this is Blue Star Calamaris, which will be beautiful periwinkle colored daisy flowers all summer into fall. And what you also see back here is more cat's pajamas cat mint. <laughs> Who knew? Now, I really wanna show you this plant right here. This is Amsonia storm cloud. And look at this blue color. Look at that. That is stunning. The plant starts out on very dark, dark olive stems. I mean, really dark. And then it comes into its own and just look at it. It's spring blooming. And so it'll be just a nice green after this. And then it gets some yellow fall color. But this plant is so beautiful. It'll eventually get to be about 36 inches wide and probably two to three feet tall eventually. It's a slow growing shrub. Well, it's a perennial, but it kind of takes on a shrub-like form. And what I might do is I have another one of these in another bed back here, and I think I'm actually gonna stick it over here because I really like the idea of just having a lot of this color. Boy, is that beautiful. Just really pretty. Yeah, check out this cat's pajamas cat mint. And what's even more bizarre is the hellebores are still blooming. They've been blooming since January this year. I don't know what to tell you about the mother nature doings this year. I really don't. Some things are blooming earlier. Some things are blooming later. This is the other quote unquote dwarf burning bush, although it looks a little taller because I'm letting it grow this year. And then you can see that the little quick fire hydrangeas are starting to fill in with their leaves. And unfortunately, <laughs> my red bud stick, quote unquote, lost a lot of its petals during all the rain, but it still has several hanging on and it's starting to leaf out. And then look at these hellebores. Look how pretty they still look. Since January. Now these are called Candy Love and they are stunning. So here is GM Tempo Rose, just starting out. Very tiny plant. I planted three of them last year. Pretty, right? Now let me pull back and show you the mistake I made. <laughs> Can you see them? Barely. So when I planted them last fall, these daffodils weren't around. And although I did look at my videos and I did look at my photos, you know, I knew I thought I planted them sort of in between the daffodils, but yeah, <laughs> so you don't really see those, but I'm gonna leave them and let them grow because I don't wanna just pull them out and get them to start over. I'd rather they start getting situated here and see how they grow and develop. I mean, they will grow taller and be bushier, but it is kind of funny because I said, oh, you can't even really see them. But they do have very pretty flowers. Let me just show you. I mean, look, look how, whoop, let me get in there. Isn't that pretty? GM is part of the rose family and that's why the flowers look similar to roses. Just real quick before I go inside because now it's raining even a little bit harder. <laughs> But it's so nice to be out here. It smells good. It feels good. So here are some unnamed ornamental onions. And I do like that they bloom in the springtime right in front of the totally tangerine geum that's back here. Looks very pretty. I can never get enough of this plant. This is also a sterile variety, so it is going to bloom a lot longer for you than some of the seeded varieties of geum. And I don't know if I should say seeded, but some of the non-sterile varieties. And then these are my popcorn drift roses. Look at them. Now I did prune these, but look how they're also already jutting out. Some of these taller, I might trim these back just because they're on the edge, but I do like that they would sort of soften the paver bricks here. 
but that's gonna look so beautiful. I mean, already, I put a little video up already. I had some pretty blooms last fall, which I hadn't expected. And I still have some of these gorgeous daffodils blooming, not many. Most of them I deadheaded back. And there's a little lime punch hydrangea back there. Don't know if we'll see him bloom yet. He was in a really sorry state when I got him a couple years ago. Lost on a FedEx truck for about almost two to three weeks. So we'll just let him do his thing. Now the butterfly bushes are starting to fill in. And these do start to leaf out very late, especially if you live in a colder area. I know I had some gardeners ask me about this and just be patient. In some colder areas, like way north, these may not show leaves until maybe Father's Day. So don't fret, don't pull them out, just be patient. I know it's not fun looking at sticks, but you can see a lot of new growth will also come directly from the ground. And that may be what happens with you if you live in a very cold area. So. Don't fret, just be patient. And if you don't get some green leaves on the stems, eventually, once it's leafed out, you can always cut those back. So here is my beloved Boulevard Cypress. And I got a lot of the brown needles off of it yesterday. Another thing I was able to do without stepping in the bed. After it rains, you can see some of the brown needles down there. After it rains, you really don't want to step in your beds, even if you've got heavy bark mulch like I do, or you have wood mulch, any kind of mulch, even rocks, because the ground is so saturated after so much rain, you just don't want to compact it at all. So you got to be patient until you can get back actually in the bed and do some weeding and things like that. But I'm going to put a picture up so you see what this looked like when I planted it a couple years ago and what it looks like today. So it's growing nicely. I'm very, very happy about this. I love this plant. And then one last thing because it's coming down. <laughs> All right, so there's the little lime, little lime punch hydrangea. And you know, we're getting more leaves on it. I don't, I really don't expect to see flowers on it this year. I'm thinking this is gonna be another year where it's just trying to grow and get its roots situated, but we'll see. And then, oh, look how beautiful. This is another Amsonia storm cloud, but I just wanted to show you. The blue color of these flowers is just amazing. And this is the one that I think I'm gonna actually dig up and put in the other bed because it's kind of hidden back here. You know, it's behind the crab apple tree. It's behind what's now gonna be you see over there that's the popcorn drift roses on the other side you're not really gonna see it in the summer it's basically gonna be background green color anyway but in the spring I think it needs a better place to shine than hidden back here it's like a hidden gem right now and of course because of all the rain <laughs> this is the remains of the beautiful blooms we didn't have as great a bloom on this tree this year because of the rain in other words, we had a lot of blooms and the rain just took them all off. But the tree still looks beautiful. Still very pretty. What's nice about the prairie fire crab apples is the new growth, as you see here, is like a very gorgeous, kind of like a burgundy, almost a mahogany burgundy. And then the new leaves come out green and olive. It's not beautiful. And you still see, oops, you still see one or two berries. <laughs> I think those would be called ripe. I'm not sure the birds want those anymore. And this little guy you see right here, that is going to be a Globemaster Allium, grown from a bulb. It will become huge. And the, the only downside about these is you can already see, see how this leaf is becoming a little bit brown. The bigger the bulb gets and when it gets closer to bloom time, these, all these fronds, these leaves are all gonna start looking horrible. And that's the one downside about those. So, you know, it is what it is, but the, just know that you'll get a beautiful bulb and a beautiful flower, but the fronds around the base are gonna look not so great. 
And then this is the Firelight Hydrangea, which is coming into a respectable size this year. So the Limelight Hydrangea tree is starting to leaf out, but the bed's looking mostly green for the most part. Boy, especially because of this winter gem boxwood that really needs to be pruned. And I'll be showing you that when I do it, preferably not in the rain. But I did want to show you that despite the rain, I do have some beautiful, beautiful flowers. Not many, but enough to make me smile. So until next time, happy gardening.